Galnet News Digest, 14th of November 3309. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, an Imperial research scientist suggests that killing those rescued from the Thargoid Titans might be necessary. President-elect Winters, entirely unsurprisingly, rejects Hudson's parting proposals. And we consider whether Professor Palin's poisoning plan bears a similarity to Commander John Jameson's mycoid virus. Opinions are as mixed about the Thargoid Titan returnees in the Empire as elsewhere. But a call this week to consider euthanasia for them has caused widespread dismay. The call comes from an article in the Citizens Chronicle written by Dr Zoe Terentia, chief researcher at Camadino Medipure. Dr Terentia claims to have detected autoimmune responses in Imperial subjects who have been rescued from the Titans. Autoimmunity is where the body has an immune response against itself, sometimes as a result of invasive viruses mutating cells. In this case, the cause seems to be caused by barely detectable physiological changes and is not in itself life-threatening. But Dr Terentia sees the immune responses as evidence that the Thargoids have in some subtle way changed their captives' physiology. Describing these changes as mutations... Dr. Terentia recommended that those rescued from the Titans should be moved to a secure location outside inhabited space and monitored closely for any further signs of mutation. If there is any risk of the Thargoid mutation spreading to the wider population, Dr. Terentia recommends that those rescued should be put to death and the bodies treated as biohazard material. Senator Caspian Leopold, who is part of the Imperial delegation to Aegis, agreed that caution is vital and that those rescued must remain in enforced medical isolation whilst there is any doubt about the safety of rehabilitating them into society. However, he rejected both Dr Terentia's demand for extreme levels of biosecurity and Azimuth's earlier demand to be allowed to investigate and experiment on those rescued. Describing Azimuth as butchers, he said the Senate has rejected Azimuth Nassim Qadir's request and said that the Empire continues to hold that it wants no further association with Salvation's organisation. Addressing Dr Terentia's concerns, he pointed to research carried out by the Imperial Science Academy which identified tissue scarring in the bodies of those rescued from the Titans. Its xenological expert, Ivano Columbera, reported that the life support systems used by the Thargoids were intrusive and the Academy considered a limited immune response to the Thargoid technology to be perfectly normal. This does, however, leave open the so-called War of the Worlds question of whether separately evolved and previously isolated organisms such as the Thargoids might be harbouring viruses or other pathogens that might prove deadly to humanity. And there are still those who believe the far-fetched theory that those rescued from the Titans might, after their release back into society, turn into a zombie army fighting on behalf of the Thargoids and probably wearing caustic green suit cosmetics to show which side they're fighting on. That's clearly never going to happen. President-elect Winters says she'll fight President Hudson's valedictory salvo of legislation. But Core Dynamics says that it welcomes the massive tax rebates that have been proposed. According to Winters, Hudson's draft legislation has only been put forward because of Jerome Archer's poor performance in the polls. Winters didn't bring out a huge vote, but it was enough to defeat Hudson's chosen successor, Archer, who was immensely unpopular, mainly because he was responsible for the creation of the domestic spy network, the Proactive Detection Bureau. Archer will become the shadow president, and Winters is convinced that Hudson is attempting to tip politics in his favour, and to make life difficult for her in what is technically her second term. Hudson's proposals are to have a publicly funded right-wing think tank, a media regulation authority that will be in the pocket of the Republicans, to provide the proactive detection bureau which Winters has pledged to abolish with military technology, 
and give massive tax breaks to military contractors such as Core Dynamics. Core Dynamics CEO Owen McKenna has said that the tax cuts will help offset the reduced military spending that he alleges Winters has proposed and help to keep Core profitable. McKenna also pointed out that cutting military spending in the middle of the Thargoid invasion makes no sense at all. President Hudson has passed form working behind the scenes with Core Dynamics. After his close friend Fleet Admiral Vincent had sabotaged President Halsey's policies on onion head control, it was also Vincent who sabotaged the presidential flight Starship One, leading to the loss for nearly a year of President Halsey and to Hudson's ascendance to the presidency. It was years later in 3307 that Vincent was found guilty of having received bribes from Core Dynamics to sabotage the Starship, ostensibly to prevent Halsey from cutting military spending. Vincent was denied a public trial and is held in solitary confinement in a high security facility, so he has not had the opportunity to implicate Hudson. However, suspicions in liberal circles are strong that Hudson may have backed the attempted assassination of his predecessor in order to gain power. The only complication in this theory is that the CEO of Core Dynamics at the time was Jupiter Rochester, one of the sons of liberal president-elect Isolde Rochester, Winter's second-in-command. Like Vincent, Jupiter Rochester is serving a life sentence following his failed insurrection against the people of the Federation. Peace activists have been expressing concern that Professor Palin's plan to poison the spire sites may become a repeat of the disastrous mycoid virus incident. Palin, working with Aegis, has identified that the Spire sites are being used to resupply essential materials to the Titan motherships, which form the core of the Thargoid invasion. Aegis has established a programme of systematic sabotage of the materials at the Spire sites. Coordinated from rescue ships, commanders bring back commodities gathered from the Spire sites, which are then converted into a contaminant that is placed into containers on the Spires and which Professor Palin hopes will impact the ongoing operation of the Titans. The plan to introduce contaminants into the Thargoid hive ships bears some resemblance to the sabotage of an earlier type of Thargoid mothership in 3351, when a commander John Jameson delivered a contaminant known as the mycoid virus developed by INRA in association with azimuth biochemicals. The effect was reportedly devastating, with both Thargoid technology and the Thargoids themselves severely damaged. The attempted strike by the same organisation that made a second attempt at genocide in August last year using the Proteus Wave weapon was widely condemned as unethical, and the discovery of Azimuth's involvement played some part in its fall from favour. However, it is undeniable that the subsequent Thargoid retreat led to more than 150 years of peace. It is unclear what effect Professor Palin's contaminant will have on the modern hive ships. Will it simply reduce their effectiveness, making them vulnerable to being driven out of human space? Or will the Thargoids crewing them be wiped out in a similar manner to victims of the mycoid virus? What actions are ethical in times of war? Can we legitimately do anything we need to protect our homeworlds? Or do we need to think of the Thargoids as sentient beings who deserve compassion too, even as they strike deep into our territory? The morality of war is complex. But for many of us, these ethical matters are moot because it's way too difficult to get our hands on the semi-refined spire minerals that are needed for the contaminant, even if we wanted to. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to. Hold up. 